what's up you guys welcome back to my channel oh my gosh did you guys miss me i really went m.i.a for a little bit y'all don't freaking hate me but in this video i'm gonna be showing you guys how i do everything step by freaking step i'm talking about wash my berries i'm talking about melting my chocolate i'm talking about how i even dip this berry how i drizzle all of that i'm gonna show you guys okay i got you so i'm gonna end up starting off with first of all we gotta choose our berries okay i ended up finding these at walmart and they look amazing every single berry in that packet was literally 10 out of freaking 10 it, they were beautiful but you full so i like to use the veggie wash from trader joe's this is also linked in my amazon you guys but if you guys end up going to trader joe's to get it it's way like it's literally like triple less than it is on amazon okay so i'm just putting y'all on but if you don't have access to a trader joe's i definitely recommend this veggie wash that is linked in my amazon don't play anyways i end up just soaking the berries for like five minutes and then i'll dump the water and rinse them out with some clean fresh agua and that's about it you guys that's usually how i wash my berries and they be squeaky clean okay a lot of you guys have asked me where I got this red bowl where I wash my berries as well. And it's actually linked in my Amazon too, you guys. Oh my gosh, everything is literally linked in my Amazon. Like, don't play. Let me plug myself in real quick. Don't forget to check the description down below to get access to my Amazon store for rent. And I really be putting y'all on, so go ahead and follow me over there. So, we want these berries to be 110% dry, you guys. So, make sure that you guys are drying them completely I go ahead and rub them kind of hard with my napkin and then I make sure to dry under the leaves and all that because you do not want these to be any kind of wet. If you dip them and your berries are still wet, your chocolate will get messed up and you do not want to risk that. Okay, I know I already said this, but look how beautiful these freaking berries are. Like, look at that. Every single one of them, the shape, the size, oh my goodness. I always feel so blessed when I come across berries like this. They're like, they're gorgeous. I'm obsessed. The number one question that I get on every single one of my social media platforms, TikTok, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, is, drum roll, what chocolate do I use? What chocolate does Magali Sweets use? So I like to use the Almond Bark and Ghirardelli mixture. It's usually a half and half of both of them. And I freaking love this little concoction formula, whatever the heck you want to call it. I'm obsessed with it. The consistency is literally a 10 out of 10. You guys, if you guys have not tried this yet, please try it because it is so good. And it tastes good. It's a 10 out of 10, y'all. I do think you guys can use this chocolate on its own as well because Almond Bark and Ghirardelli alone are really, really good brands to use. And honestly, I have not had a problem with either one of these. So if you guys don't want to do the half and half, either one of them is still really good on its own. When it comes down to melting chocolate, you want to make sure that you're using a silicone cup. Well, at least that's what I like to use and it makes it way easier to like not burn your chocolate because if you're using a glass container that usually gets your chocolate super hot and it's most likely to burn okay so go ahead and invest in some silicone cups they are literally the best thing ever so i do 30 second intervals and that's literally the best way you can melt chocolate and i think this one it took me two minutes to do so yeah you guys melting chocolate is so freaking easy i don't know what you guys be doing that it burns it <laughs> Or maybe your uh, microwave is just too hot. I don't know. Let me know which, how you guys melt your chocolate because I want to know. I've seen a lot of people have issues with melting blah, blah, blah. I cannot talk today. Oh, my goodness. But you get the gist. I want to know how you melt your chocolate. Once I get it out of the microwave, I do grab a spoon and go ahead and mix it up. I don't want any types of clumps. If there is some of that almond bark or Ghirardelli um, chips that are still in there that are not fully melted, I go ahead and swirl it up in there and make sure that everything is mixed up because it will help finish uh, melting everything up in there that wasn't melted. Oh my god, I feel like I said that's so confusing, but I hope you guys know what I meant, okay? Okay. Other thing that helps you make the perfect chocolate covered strawberry is getting a foam board. Literally, you guys, this changes the freaking game. 
your berry has no flat booties if you do it this way and also it's completely covered so I go ahead and dip my berries and then I put them on the foam board instead of putting them on a parchment paper or foil, whatever the heck you guys use. But I prefer this way, that way my berry is 100% covered. Comment down below if you're team milk chocolate or team white chocolate. Because I am a definitely 100,000 quadrillion percent milk chocolate type of girly, okay? Nothing is better than milk chocolate. I don't care what y'all say, what y'all tell me. White chocolate will never be better than milk chocolate, okay? <laughs> I don't know why that freaking popped up in my head, but I just had to freaking ask. This is what they end up looking like after they are completely dipped and they look so good already. But if you guys have watched my videos for a while, you do notice that I like to have my berries 100% smooth. You know what I just noticed? I love saying 100%. Okay, anyways, <laughs> so to get that look, I do like to double dip my berry sometimes. And this is one of the times that I will be double dipping because I don't like when it look like chicken skin. Like look at that one on the left and then look at that one on the right. I know you guys see that difference. I just think they look way better this way. Let me know what you guys think. Am I doing so much with the double dipping? I don't know, but when it comes down to white chocolate though, I will double dip no matter what. But for milk chocolate, I sometimes don't double dip only because it doesn't look as bad as the white. If you know, you know. If you know, you know. I'm not gonna be using that much white chocolate, so I'm gonna go ahead and just use the almond bark alone. I'm not gonna be mixing no Ghirardelli in it, but this will be the same process as the milk chocolate melting part. So I'm not gonna go ahead and show you for this part, but just know, I'm gonna be doing the same exact thing that I did for the milk chocolate. Looking back on this footage, I don't really know why I melted so much white chocolate knowing that I'm just gonna be drizzling. <laughs> so don't use as much as mine if you're gonna be uh, making like a classic dozen because I went way overboard with the white chocolate. Once it's out of the microwave, make sure you guys give it a little twirl up in there with a spoon. Make sure it's 100%. Oh, there I go with the 100%, bro. There I go again. Make sure it's completely melted, okay? I'm pretty sure that this is just a me thing, but I swear when you mix it in there in the bag with your hand, I swear it makes your drizzling way better. <laughs> I don't know why, but I do this with every time I'm about to drizzle, decorate anything with the chocolate. You guys are always asking me, how do I cut my bags? And this is how I cut it, you guys. I literally just snip the tip and that's how I do it. Sometimes I'll take a spoon and I go ahead and make sure that my drizzling is on point because you do not want to mess up a drizzle, okay? I definitely recommend you guys doing that spoon method as well if you are a beginner because trust me, that is the first thing you guys want to get down is how to perfect a drizzle. So this is real time drizzling, you guys. This is literally how long it takes me to drizzle a berry and I would say that this is how fast you should be going when drizzling a berry. Because if you go slower than this, you're most likely to make mistakes, slash, it will be squiggly. You know what I mean? And we do not want squiggly lines. I like to personally drizzle from top to bottom. I know a lot of people do bottom to top, but I don't know. I just got used to doing the top from bottom. I've been doing it like that since I started making berries. And that's just the way I like to do it. Let me know if you guys like to drizzle from top to bottom or bottom to top. Let me know, y'all. Aren't drizzling videos literally the best freaking videos to watch? Oh my gosh, sometimes I'll catch myself literally binge watching people drizzle on Instagram or TikTok. Or is it just me? I love watching drizzling videos. They're literally so freaking satisfying, especially mine. And <laughs> no, I'm just kidding y'all, but for real, I love to watch these. Here are some tips on how I like to drizzle, you guys. So before I start drizzling, I like to make sure that my chocolate is coming out smoothly from the bag. If it's not coming out smoothly, then you might be getting some air holes and you need to fix that before you start drizzling, okay? When it comes down to drizzling, you guys, make sure that you guys are keeping the same pressure on your bag and the same rhythm. That way the lines are coming out nice and even and it's giving that clean look, okay? Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> Also, one of the most important steps when drizzling is making sure you're holding your berry and not letting your berry sit on parchment paper while drizzling. That is a major ick to anybody, okay? Do not offend me, y'all. Make sure you're holding your berry while drizzling. Also, if you guys are paying attention to the way I've been drizzling, do you guys notice how I slowly move my berry up while I drizzle? I feel like that creates the perfect lines. And another tip, 
do not go over your drizzle again it will mess up your berry and it'll look super super ugly and messy you guys do not do that i hope these tips help they have helped me over the years to perfect my drizzling let me know what you guys think about my drizzling you guys because i was feeling a little like iffy this day but they came out nice tell me they did not come out beautiful look at that berry y'all okay i see me so these berries are freaking huge I ended up putting them in a 10 by 7 by 2 and a half box and they fit perfectly fine in here. If you guys have smaller berries than this, I recommend a 9 by 6 by 2 and a half. Another tip you guys when packaging your orders, and this goes to anything though, any custom berries, any variety boxes, cheesecake, anything, I definitely recommend getting mini cupcake liners because I feel like they make the box look extra bomb. <laughs> Okay, but let's just take a moment and appreciate this beautiful box. I feel like classics are literally the best freaking berry to exist. Okay, I said it. Yeah. Yeah, I did. I freaking love this box. It's just so pretty, so satisfying to look at. Like, I don't know. It's a freaking 10 out of 10 for me. Let me know what you guys think down below. Or am I doing too much? Because y'all know I love to do too much. And of course, if you guys did get a little bit of help from me, make sure to tag me in whatever you guys make because I want to freaking see it, okay? Do not, I said, do not be greedy, okay? And let's not forget the edible glitter at the end. You guys are always asking me what I'd be spraying. It's just edible glitter, you guys. And look how bomb this box came out. It is too fucking sexy, okay? All right, bye!